Hey guys, welcome to something a little bit different, a product review. I don't do these often, but there's a particular product a number of you have recommended to me uh, over the years, and I'm currently working on several projects that I think can benefit from them, so I thought I'd give them a try. And that is a way to replace these multi-suction cam electrolytics, the uh, FP type type FP. So what's in these is one to four sections of electrolytic capacitors. You're probably all familiar with modern ones where you get one section. So these have one or four of these inside with all of the common leads attached together. Typically they run to the can. These are not readily available anymore. Yes, I know there are one or more companies that make these today. They're kind of, kind of, they are boutique uh, caps. They cost 30 to 50 bucks a pop. There's a limited um, range of capacitance and voltages available. They seem to be catering to the uh, amplifier crowd. So the types I need for televisions and certain vintage radios are not really available. Plus, considering that a TV can use four or five of these that really adds to the cost of the repair or restoration and to be honest um, most of my customers wouldn't be willing to pay the money they would rather have me come up with some alternate solution which is what you've seen me do over the years uh, a very common way to do it is to install a terminal strip leave this there maybe for appearance sakes clip out the leads install a terminal strip somewhere nearby mount the individual caps to it, run the leads over to it. Or, cut these open, remove the insides, drill holes through the base, mount caps on them. Maybe put the cover back over it. Or uncrimp the seam, and again, clean out the insides. There's a number of ways of doing it. All of them are very time-consuming, tedious, messy, etc. So, there is a product called Adapt-A-Cap, which is an aid to help replace these with using these, but a way to mount them so you don't have to deal with these old cans. Now, I want to be upfront about something. Now, I just went to the website uh, and placed an order. Uh, I didn't say who I was or that I'd be reviewing them or anything like that. However, my order didn't ship for a while and I got concerned I reached out to them and it turned out the guy who processes the orders uh, I believe he said he was expecting his first child any day so he had a lot of other things on his mind I said hey I totally understand take your time no rush he said hey you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna refund your purchase price ship you what you ordered for free plus include some engineering samples of other products we're uh, considering I said hey that's awesome by the way I have a YouTube channel I'd be happy to share my experiences. Now, I don't know if you recognize me from my name or anything, but all I can tell you is that's what happened. So, full disclosure. This is what he sent me. These are what I ordered. I ordered a ton of these guys. This is their flagship product, the Adapta Cap. It's a circuit board where you can mount up to four of these guys and then mount it on the chassis and run your connections over to it. And they put them on this little, rather novel little uh, uh, business card sized circuit board and these simply snap out. And this is what you use and this is their advertising. So this is the website adaptacap.com and here is some additional info. So they replace any FP multi-section can capacitor with the four discrete capacitors with five millimeter lead spacing, which is the standard. All right. So this is what they're talking about. This matches up to this, all of these two. And uh, what we're looking at here is this is from a late 40s RCA TV. And this guy came out of the late 40s Majestic TV I've been working on. And this is out of a 1961 Filco Predicta. 
so you can see over the years things didn't really change much. The dimensions are the same, the little symbols they put next to the values of the semicircle, half moon, square, triangle, blank, those have not changed and they include the same little symbols on these. I didn't, didn't notice it at first because they're kind of small, but yeah, there's the triangle, square, half moon, and blank. So the idea is you take your cap, and by the way, this is the bottom. It took me a while to realize that because I finally realized that to get the symbols to match up, this mounts down. The caps go on this side. You put your positives towards the middle and the negatives on the outside, and you solder them down. Here's one I already cooked up. This particular one is replacing a three-section cap, so just one of the slots is left open. Now, one interesting thing to note is that there are two distinct ways these get mounted. Sometimes they're on insulating phenolic wafers. For example, in this RCA TV, the negative side of the can does not go to ground. So it's isolated from the chassis. You'll also see this a lot in series strung devices. Sometimes it does go to ground. You may have heard these referred to as twist lock, where these go through slots on the chassis and they're simply twisted around. So the, this, this can goes to the negative lead on all the capacitors. The negative leads are all connected together and they all go to the outside of the can. Sometimes the can goes right to the chassis, sometimes it doesn't. So the clever way they implemented that on these little boards is there's a jumper. Let's take a look at the one that I popped out just now. If you use this as is and just install your capacitors and mount this to the chassis, these will not be going to the negative leads on the capacitors. The negative leads on the capacitors go to this ring here. You can see this. These boards, by the way, are very well made. They're gold plated, high quality stuff. So this ring, this is your negative lead on the caps. This is the frame. They are not connected. If you want to, if you want the negative leads on the cap to be going to this, so when you put your mounting screws to the chassis, the chassis goes to the negative leads, install a jumper wire. Simple as that. Now you may notice these slots here. What the heck are those for? That's a nice little engineering way to boost the voltage rating of the circuit board. So I'm sure this is FR4 or some similar type of epoxy fiberglass circuit board material, which has a certain breakdown voltage. I'm sure it's hundreds of volts per millimeter. Well, to give you some extra protection, the slots go between the negative and positive on the cap. So if there was a large voltage spike, this gives you some added voltage protection there. Those slots are, have nothing to do with these old twist lock uh, tabs. They're there for some extra insulation. All right, so you simply mount your caps like so. And then, assuming your chassis um, has mounting holes like this, this simply will drop right in the holes, line up, attach it with a couple screws, and then uh, run your wires over to this board. Now, that's the one thing that's a little different. So these old ones have lugs, and the wires would be run through the holes and the lugs, wrapped around and soldered in place. These don't have lugs. You just have holes. So unwrap your wires from these lugs, trim them to an appropriate short length, put them down into these holes and, and solder them in place. Uh, I've done a couple. I kind of worked up a technique. I find it easier if I fill these up with some solder before I bring the wires over. Uh, especially if you're working with the chassis on its side. Um, it can be a little hard to get the solder to, to really flow in there well. Also, tin your wires first. So flood this up with some solder, tin your wires, then you can just heat this up and stick your wires into the holes. We'll hold them in place till the solder cools and you'll be good to go. Well, so the one um, downside, and it's a fairly minor one, is sometimes uh, these caps 
are just mounted with slots cut into the metal chassis and these twist lock uh, tabs are just bent over. There are no holes in the chassis. So in that situation, if you want to use this, you'll need to drill a couple holes in the chassis. I floated the idea to uh, them, I haven't heard back yet, about, hey, maybe we could take this, uh, make a variation where it's completely circular, and have some similar slots like this uh, around the perimeter that line up with these that uh, are all connected together with copper and then you could break these off or find some metal stock and cut little pieces of metal insert them into those slots, solder them in place and then you could put this on your chassis and twist them over. In other words, make up a twist lock base like so, like this. This is one particular type of chassis where I'm really excited, psyched about using these because I work on a lot of these. It's a very common, very popular TV series. This is a Motorola 7-inch electrostatic set. Uh, TS4 and later TS18 series chassis. These are series strung sets with a floating chassis. There's no power transformer. There are three electrolytic cans, all of them isolated, all of them perfect opportunity to use these guys. I've restored a lot of these. These are a pain to deal with. I've tried a bunch of different techniques. I've cut the cans at the base while leaving them in place. I've unmounted the cans, cleaned out the guts, restuffed them, and reinstalled them. I've done terminal strips. I've done it all. It all stinks. It's all tedious, time-consuming. This new technique, all we got to do is drill out these rivets, disconnect the wires, pop in three of these guys, hook the wires back up, and we are done. Price for these boards, uh, I believe if you get quantities of 10, they're 4 bucks a pop which uh, seems pretty reasonable to me for such a specialized, unique item. Uh, I will definitely be ordering up a bunch more because I have probably 10 of these sets <laughs> I want to restore and many other 7-inch uh, electrostatic sets use, use similar, very similar type caps. Now let's take a look at one of my active projects, the project that encouraged me to tr give these a try, and that is the RCA 9T241 that I'm going to hook up to the Duo View projection system. This is a late 40s RCA, and these early RCA sets used a split power supply. There's a positive and a negative supply, and the electrolytics on the top side of the chassis, none of them are grounded. They're all on these insulated phenolic bases, so perfect opportunity to use these. That's where this cap came from. Now initially I was going to leave these in place, heat them up, remove the cardboard cover, cut them open, and drill little holes and feed through new caps, put the cardboard covers back up on. However, I couldn't get them off. In the past, uh, I've had pretty good luck heating them up, and the covers would typically be held on by a blob of tar up at the top. And you use a heat gun, and they soften, and you can pull them off. These weren't coming off. I gave up on that one, and ended up just disconnecting all the wires and uh, removing the rivets, which came out very easily. And then I just tore the cardboard cover off, because I was curious. It's not tar, they're glued on. I don't think I could have ever gotten these covers off without destroying them. And these covers had no markings whatsoever on them. With the cover off, then I could finally see the various voltage ratings for the various suctions and so on. So, anyways, I carefully disconnected the wires, removed the old capacitor, put my four new caps on there. These are all what we sometimes call skinny caps. With the advent of flat screen TVs and LED lighting fixtures, these are readily available. Um, they're high temperature, long life, high ripple current. I bought the best caps I could get. They weren't a small form factor. I think they will hold up for a very, very long time. Uh, there's plenty of room. As you can see, I could have even gotten larger. These smaller ones, I believe, are 10 millimeter in diameter, and this is 12, might be 15. 
they all fit with uh, room to spare. To attach them, you don't have to use these fancy stainless steel cap uh, button head uh, screws. I just happen to have a bunch of them. This is what I got, I think, from McMaster Car. Uh, it came with a hundred screws, washers, and nuts for about a few bucks. Uh, number four, uh, dash 40, three eighths inch, uh, probably a little shorter would be fine. The chassis metal wasn't all that thick. Uh, these work out great. Of course, you can use just standard sheet metal screws like these, this would be fine. But I had these on hand, so I used them. All right, so what does it look like on the other side? Well, here's my adapt cap board, and you can see the mounting screws coming through here. Here are all the wires that have formerly gone to that electrolytic can. You can see one here I have yet to do, and that's how things would have looked with the old type cans. I'm going to jumble the wires, going into the lugs and twist it around. So I take reference photos, take notes. So you know how to hook it back up, disconnect everything, remove the old cap, trim the leads, tin them, and stick them into the appropriate holes, and uh, solder them in place. Again, the outer ring, in this case, is floating, but se several components or wires go to it, so the, for example, this resistor is going to the common on all those electrolytics, and then these inner pads, those are the various positive leads of the electrolytic cap. That's all there is to it. Now, as far as the appearance goes, keep in mind heat is not a capacitor's friend. It has a very detrimental effect on their life. Exponentially detrimental effect on their life. That's one advantage these old caps have is they're big and they're aluminum so they can radiate heat. Why would a capacitor get hot? Because they're not perfect. There is some internal resistance, the ESR, equivalent series resistance. They do self-heat, in other words. Not a lot, but some. Well, until they start degrading, then it, they kind of <laughs> really go downhill. Uh, and there's also, of course, heat generating components like a tube nearby. So if you keep them open like this, you're going to get air circulating, you're going to get ventilation, they're going to be able to dissipate heat. If I was to, say, put a thick cardboard cover over this, I'd be holding that heat in. I've also seen guys hot glue caps in place. Just remember that hot glue, it's insulating these. They're going to have, not going to be able to dissipate heat as well. If you put an aluminum can over it and then cardboard, you'd kind of be getting back to this. That would help. Um, but I, I'm inclined to leave them like this. To let air flow around, and you can see them, if one started to bulge or something, you would know. Plus, anybody else can see what was done, what was used. There's new caps, these are the types of caps that were used. You can see the temperature rating, the manufacturer brand, you know, it matters to some folks. Uh, so I'm inclined to leave them like this. Plus, I think they look kind of cool. I think that's why they went with the black circuit boards, because they look kind of nifty. <laughs> so, all in all, I'm very happy with these. I should have tried them sooner. Uh, part of the reason I didn't know is I was working on a lot of sets that use twist locks. And I wasn't quite sure, I'm still not quite sure how I would use these short of drilling holes in the chassis, which I'm not thrilled about doing, but depending on the set and the value of it and the situation, I, I would be fine with doing it. But certainly for the chassis like that Motorola I just showed you, like this RCA, fantastic solution, very happy. Also use them in the Majestic 120 I've been working on, you will see that shortly. Uh, that's, what, that's what's been holding up these projects as I was waiting to get these boards and give them a try. Very happy, highly recommended. Give them a try, adaptacap.com.